um, and uh, this this optimized portfolio mix, which we've actually got on the table on page 26, you'll see that we've um, we've got um, we've got our optimized portfolio there. Um, that's the mix of everything that we're suggesting that you go into. Um, this is will provide a lower risk to you, but it will also provide a higher return. Uh, it's hard to get that kind of mix of, uh, of, of performance, but we're doing that with this. Um, it's fully described um, in how we come up with that in the uh, appendices. Um, it's interesting reading, um, but that's what we're, where we're suggesting you go with the retirement funds. We'll update our, uh, our investment strategy annually because, of course, this mix will change. Um, so um, we'll look at that, and, but currently this is it. So retirement planning, this is the next step. You've suggested that you, well, you'd like to retire at 62 with 85% of your uh, pre-retirement income, which is fine, um, but it doesn't, at this point, um, look like that 62 is going to be, um, um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a push uh, to really try to get it to 62. It would be nicer to plan for 63 currently and then bump it down to 62 once we're successful with the plan. Um, so right now we're proposing that you that we plan for retirement um, at 63. Um, now in order to do that we're suggesting Tyler you contribute a total of $8,000 personally not including your uh, uh, your employers uh, contributions to your 401k but Contribute eight thousand dollars to your four hundred one k, and also to um, put any new contributions into our optimal mix of uh, of um, assets that we've we've created here. Um, also, your current four hundred one k, we're gonna uh, suggest that you um, put that into our optimal mix. Mia, um, towards retirement, um, we're suggesting. Um, about $3,900. You can see the exact amount um, over there on page 27 um, into your 401k for retirement. Now, actually, you've, you're going to get more through your 401k that we're going to ask you to put in, and that's all because of your art gallery that you'd like to do upon retirement. So there's more coming, but for retirement, we're telling you to put about $3,900 into your 401k. Again, we'll, we'll uh, reevaluate whether um, uh, we think we can push it to 62 for retirement. We'll look at that. Um, but right now, let's just plan on 63. Um, that's going um, to that's gonna get you where you need to be. Um, and it's uh, one more year. Um, we think the results um, would, would be better um, with 63. Okay, so um, your art gallery, it looks like in today's dollars, as you've expressed uh, to us, it's going to cost $100,000 today if it was built. Um, now we looked at the time value of money and, how, and, and you know, given inflation, what that's going to look at, like um, further on down the line. Um, what we'd like to do uh, in order to get us to the 100000 in today's dollars later when you retire and you want to uh, finally do all of this, um, the art gallery, um, and get the art collection is to start it with $5,000 from che the checking account, start the fund. Um, and uh, we'd like annual savings in order to get it um, to where it needs to be upon retirement of $4,800. Again, save through the 401k. So it's not only going to be it's going to be 3,928 um, towards retirement, and 4,827 dollars uh, towards your art gallery. But it's all going to be through contributions to your 401k. Um, we think that again uh, through 63 um, that. Um, you'll have the necessary funds to not only retire, but do what you want to in retirement, which Mia is um, for you, um, the art um, the art projects that you have. Education planning, 
Um, one of your one of your main goals is uh, for Becky's education um, to fully fund that when she um, when she's ready to matriculate into college. Um, you've uh, said that she it looks like she's going to need about ten thousand um, dollars every year for four years when she starts. Um, given the education um, inflation rate of five percent, the assumption looks like that we're going to need upon her entering school about $133,000 in order for her to get through uh, school. So we have to start saving now for that. We plan to use a, a Section 529 type strategy. Section 529 is a, is a type of plan whereby uh, contributions, while not currently deductible from your income, um, uh, they compound tax-free within the account, um, and earnings on the distributions um, are not taxed. Um, as long as they're withdrawn for qualified education expenses, there's no tax on the on the earnings. So uh, it's a pretty good deal. Um, so we're suggesting you, you go into those to fund Becky's retirement. Uh, excuse me, Becky's well, retirement's a little early for her to be considering, but her education, we'll, we'll think about her retirement later. Um, now, we're also suggesting with the, with the 529, Utah's got a pretty good plan, um, and that's where we're suggesting you go. Uh, they, they've got a highly rated plan through Mor uh, Morningstar rates them pretty well, so we're, we're, we'd like to go through that, especially with uh, Becky's timeline currently. Um, and finally, with the double E savings bond, I know we talked about this earlier with retirement, but um, in five years, um, it's gonna uh, it's gonna reach the the uh, maximum. Um, the, it's gonna reach face value. At that time, what we're gonna do is um, put the funds from the double E savings bonds into the 529 plan. We can do that and still not incur taxation. Um, and then when Becky's ready, um, that, will, uh, that will be ready for her in her Section 529 plan. In addition to that, um, we're going to need uh, an annual contribution to the Section 529 plan of $3,091. Um, and that will get us to where we need to be um, for, ed for Becky's education. All right, let's go to estate planning, page 31, it looks like. All right. Um, currently, you have wills. Um, they were drafted a while ago, and they and you used an office supply store kit in order to prepare them. That not is That's not inherently bad, but it sounds like from what I've heard, we've heard that they're not... Um, they don't probably do what you want them to do. Um, namely, you've got each other as beneficiary, but again, if something happens to both of you, then that's an issue. Um, and if you have just wills, um, the estate will go through probate, um, which probate is a court-supervised distribution of estate assets. Um, and it's a public forum, which means that there's going to be no privacy with respect to uh, your estate. Um, anybody can look up court documents and see what's what's going through the uh, the probate process. So it, it's not it's not something that w we think you should be uh, going through. Um, our recommendation, as a result, is to redraft the wills, making Becky as a contingent beneficiary, not only just each other, but also insert Becky in there as the contingent beneficiary. Also to strengthen the guardianship provisions um, with a second and third choice of guardianship. I know we've got um, Mia, your sister, in there. Probably best to include somebody else just in case something happens in the meantime to um, your sister. Um, and finally, with respect to the wills, we'd like a pour-over feature. Um, with respect to the living trust, um, that's another thing we're going to add to that.